This little hyena cub has a hard life ahead of her. It's a wild world, full of danger. She'll have to learn fast if she's going to survive. Hey team, welcome to another video. If you're new here, I'm Jules. As a wildlife cameraman, I've spent months living alongside hyenas while filming. I've grown to love them, and in this series, I'm showing you why you should too. Today, we'll follow the journey of a young hyena princess as she takes her first steps out into the wild. Let's go. This is the tale of Spotty, the spotted hyena. Lame name, I know. Sorry. Spotty's clan lives on the banks of a lagoon. But this is not the beginning of our story. For that, we need to go back. Two weeks before when I arrived in South Wyango National Park for another filming trip. I'm here to film hyenas and all the other amazing animals that live here. For viewers, documentaries always start with pretty pictures of animals. But for filmmakers like me, it starts with a search. The first step of filming is finding animals, and that can be a real challenge. For me, there's something special about the start of a filming trip. The anticipation, the excitement. It's the start of an adventure. Even though I've spent years in the wild, I still have to adjust to being back there. You have to get your mind into being a part of this landscape. Reading tracks, listening for alarm calls, watching your back. The first thing you notice is the stillness. Here, time is only dictated by whether the sun is up or down. There's no traffic, no people, but it's not quiet. All around, the bush is alive. When you're looking for hyena cubs, the best place to start is the den. It's like a family home for hyenas. This is where their young cubs grow up, so it's a focal point for the clan. But they'll often maintain a bunch of other smaller dens dotted around the area, like summer cottages. And this is where hyena mothers will give birth, away from prying eyes. Over the years, I've developed a map of all the holes I've found in the ground. Now, that might sound a bit strange, and it looks pretty confusing too, but it's actually a really good way of finding young hyena cubs. Mothers often modify holes made by porcupine or warthog into temporary dens to stash their very young cubs. So I can drive around and check all the holes in the ground for tracks, or leave camera traps up and see if there's anything living inside. But this time, the hyenas have given me the runaround. After a week of searching empty holes, I was ready to give up. Luckily, a friend of mine, Bertram, is a local guide, and he saved the day, and showed me where the hyena queen had stashed her little princess. For the first few weeks, hyena cubs are black, before they develop their yellowish colour and spots. So a little cub like this is only a few weeks old. She's totally defenceless, and completely reliant on mum. It's a scary world out there, but the den can be a tough place too. Animals living wild attract parasites. Think about what your pet dog would be like after a year or two of no grooming, or a bath. Lice, ticks and other nasty parasites crawl, burrow and scratch constantly. Am I making you itch yet? <laughs> Hyenas are tough, but even they can't handle bed bugs. So when the amount of parasites in the den gets too much, mum will move them. Threats like other predators or rival clans can also trigger a move, as can the presence of a filmmaker like me. So you have to be careful. Hyenas are really good mums, so until they trust you, you have to walk a fine line between being close enough to film, but not so close that you disturb her. When you're filming animals, it's hard not to give them a name. Scientists tend to study a lot of animals, so keeping track of them is really hard. 
So a hyena might be H317 or something equally personal. Safari guides and camera teams are less traditional and usually do give animals names. It's kind of a natural instinct. You spend so much time with them, you end up thinking of them as characters or friends. A buddy of mine, Simon, works for the National Parks Department and he accompanied me during filming. He and I wanted to name the young hyena cub Shula, but that means fart in the local language, so it probably wouldn't have made the cut. We decided that Spotty was a good enough name. Spending a lot of time at the den, you get a really good idea of just how many animals pass by. As they grow, hyena cubs have to learn to deal with these residents. Elephant, warthog, and these baboons. And work out which ones are a threat, and which ones they can chase. They haven't worked out they're supposed to be predators yet. Hyena cubs have a lot of learning to do. Not only do they have to learn about the threats from other animals, but they also have to learn how to deal with a very complex social hierarchy. Understanding your rank is one of the most important life lessons a hyena cub has to learn. They do this amazing greeting ceremony when they meet. With a superb sense of smell, they're able to tell who's who and reaffirm rank. Hyena society is matriarchal, which means it's led by females. Cubs are born with the ranks of their mothers, so if you get a raw deal and are born to a low-ranking hyena, life is tough. If you're born to a queen and you're a female cub, you'll outrank all the other hyenas, including the males. Beyonce would be proud. Who runs the world? The process of getting animals used to you is called habituation. When you're filming in areas where there are a lot of tourists, this has often been done already by the guides. But when you're filming baby animals, you have to start from scratch. Over the first few weeks of filming, the cubs gradually get more and more relaxed, and that's when you start getting the good stuff. But sometimes they can take it a little bit far. These cubs are just being curious, chewing my tires, ripping the canvas on my camera mount, and generally being cheeky. They're too close to film here, but now they know I'm not a threat, and that's great. Once they get bored, they'll start ignoring me, and that's just perfect. When hyenas look at you, it's different to other predators. One filmmaker I worked with describes it as doughy eyes. Cats like lions and leopards have a hard stare. Hyenas don't. I know I'm probably going to get trolled by sciencey types here, but hyenas have soft, intelligent eyes, more like a puppy. They also do this kind of bobbing thing with their heads when they're curious, like they're trying to figure you out. It can be a bit unnerving at first, especially at night when their eyes reflect, but once you realize that they're just curious, it's really funny to see them bobbing their heads like they're in the club. A juvenile hyena has arrived at the den with most of an impala, which they probably scavenged from a leopard. It's an odd move. Usually they'd feed elsewhere and bring back small bits of the carcass. Hyenas don't like sharing. This young hyena is a fighter. She's got a broken leg that's mended, but it's still hard to use. If she was low ranking, she'd be dead already, but she's got high status, and that means she's able to use that to her advantage. Usually when we make films, we can put a variety of shots together to make a story work. Here, it was all happening at once, and being the only camera on the scene, I had to try my best to capture it all. Other than a few cuts, you're seeing it unfold in real time. The adults are all fighting for a bit of the carcass. The young injured cub wants her share. You can see how the older hyenas are holding their aggression back. They probably know they can take what they want by force, but there would be consequences. Breaking the rules of the hierarchy is a huge no-no, and hyenas can be vicious when enforcing rank. In the middle of it all, a herd of elephants show up and a couple of excited hyenas give chase. The young injured cub asserts her rank. She knows mum will back her up. In the end, she gets her way and the dust settles. And life at the den goes back to normal. After a couple of months, Spotty has grown. 
and she and her den mates are ready to start exploring their world. They start making little forays into the wild, and this is the most dangerous time for them. They could encounter any number of threats along the way. Later in life, hyenas are able to dominate leopards, but at this age, they'd be an easy meal. This wilderness is also home to the Ensefu pride. A pride of lions can bring down prey as large as an elephant. A couple of hyena cubs would make a nice little snack. The cubs are lucky. The lions are sleeping. They're conserving their energy for later, when it's time to hunt. Or until something surprises them. Right now it's too hot to bother with a couple of scrawny cubs, but after dark it might be another story. With nowhere to be and no one to tell them what to do, the cubs meander, checking out anything that catches their attention. It's getting late now and Spotty is still very far from the den. She'll be crossing lion country in the dead of night, and the Ensefu pride? is on the hunt. The lions are feeding close to the hyena den. Thermal cameras allow us to film in the dead of night. My mate Neil was filming when the Ensefu pride and our hyena clan clashed. The hyena adults push in to try and fight for the kill. All hell breaks loose. Let's just pause here a minute. Scenes like this are difficult to watch, but you have to try not to pick sides. On the one hand, the lions have hungry mouths to feed, but on the other, the hyenas can't let the lions get too comfortable, or Spotty and the other cubs could be in danger. It's like a schoolyard fight, where you're friends with both sides, but here, you can't just step in and break it up. One of the hardest things for a filmmaker is to remain on the outside and let animals just be animals. In the morning, all is quiet at the den and it's easy to assume the worst. But a familiar face is a sight for sore eyes. Spotty is okay and she'll have learnt a good lesson about life in the wild. The cubs are in a playful mood and they've got energy to burn. <laughs> For Spotty, this is only the start of a life full of adventure. Hyenas go through so much. Fighting with lions, dodging angry hippos. Every day is a new challenge. I hope I've given you a glimpse into what makes them so special. From their time as adorable little cubs, to fierce encounters with rival predators. You've seen how they've been misrepresented, miscast, and misunderstood. Hopefully, you've fallen in love with them, and with any luck, that's made you care about them too. We're going to be doing a follow-up episode, where we'll answer any questions about hyenas you might still have, and we'll let you know ways in which you can get involved in their conservation. We'll be looking at some of the human-created threats that hyenas face, and hearing from some of the people who have made it their life's mission to protect them. People I'm lucky to count as friends. We'll be premiering that episode, so if you're interested, you can watch with us. To do that, make sure you've subscribed and turn your notifications on. And if there's anything you want to know about hyenas, just let us know. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you learned, or shoot us a DM on Instagram. We'd love to know what you think. I hope you've enjoyed our adventure together. Thanks so much for joining me, and until next time, stay wild. <laughs>